and welcome to the short stuff i'm josh and there's chuck tally ho it's short stuff time <laughs> and we're talking about something that admittedly i kind of understand and kind of hope you really understand i do good i do also before we start i want to give a hat tip to my wife yumi who came up with this one she said have you ever heard of this it's crazy and i looked into it and i was like this is crazy because what Yumi found and what we're about to sp- explain to all of you is that humans are a species, don't forget we're animals, mm-hmm. with stripes. We actually are a striped species mm-hmm. of animal. Did you know that before? I had never heard of this. I did not know we were all brindle-coated animals like my dog Nico. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly what we are. We have beautiful patterns of swirls and whorls and drips and drops and all sorts of cool stuff all over us, but we can't see them normally under normal circumstances because we don't see on the UV side of the spectrum. But if we did, we'd be like, hey, I like your stripes. Oh, I like your stripes. Mm-hmm. And with some people, depending <laughs> on the condition they have, they actually their stripes actually show. It's pretty interesting stuff. But the whole thing we're talking about, if you noticed um, the title of this episode, are what are called Blashko's lines. Those are the stripes that all humans have. Now, did this happen because Yumi had a black light and went, oh, my God. I don't know where she turned this one up. <laughs> I didn't ask her. I'll have to ask her, and then we'll record a pickup. All right. Uh, so hold on. <laughs> Insert answer here. <laughs> uh, so Blaschko's lines, that is in fact a name. Uh, it was named after a dermatologist, Alfred Blaschko. In the 1900s, he was the first person to uh, notice this, basically, and write about it. Mm-hmm. Um, he thought, he was a little bit off, though, because he thought that they followed uh, predefined patterns on humans. Right. Um but they don't. And the weird thing is, as you might think, is like, all right, so maybe these are um, lines that sort of indicate where your blood vessels are or your nerve endings are or your nerves or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that is not the case. Uh, these stripes are not blood vessels that you can see under a black light at all. But we kind of know what it is now, right? Right, yeah. There's no system in the body that these things follow. Instead, they're their own thing. They seem to be their own thing. Um, And they are distinct on all people, but there are kind of some general patterns that we'll talk about. But what what we've come up with finally today, still today, we're not 100% certain that this is correct, but the general consensus is that what Blaschko's lines are um, evidence of the the migratory route that our skin cells took and then settled into uh, while we were developing in the womb. Right. Um, I'm just going to read this little bit from Mental Floss because I think it kind of sums it up nicely. Yeah, I thought so too. And we always love to shout out our our old pals at Mental Floss. The the, MFers. (laughs) The MFers. Uh, Basically, they said these are cellular relics of our development, basically, from single cell uh, things. I thought you were quoting this. To You're humans. paraphrasing all over. No, no, no. I'm paraphrasing the beginning. Okay. Um, as the cells divided, they differentiated. Some became muscles, others bones, still others organs, and some became skin. As those skin cells continued dividing, they expanded and stretched to cover a quickly growing body. One cell line pushed and swirled through another like steamed milk poured into an espresso to make a latte. And Blaschko's lines are the molecular evidence of those swirls. It was very pretty writing. It was. So the reason that we can see these lines, Chuck, I think we should talk about after a break. Ooh. Mm Mm-hmm. So the reasons we can see these lines, Chuck, I think we should talk about now. (laughs) Very nice. So um, they believe that the the reason that there's differences, even though you can only see them under the UV spectrum, under normal normal circumstances, you cannot see the difference between skin cells on your arm or on your shoulder or on your torso, wherever. And you have Blaschko's lines all over your body, as we'll see. Mm -hmm. Because the cells that make up our skin are almost entirely identical. They all come from, generally, the same 
genetic information. So they all start out from the same cell or globs of cells, like mental floss pointed out. Um, but because of the, like the different minute experiences that each cell has, mm-hmm. those instructions get produced in just slightly different ways. So that um, we think of ourselves as like uh, genetically monolithic beings, right? Well, it turns out the term for humans um, are mosaics. All of those cells are so slightly different that it's almost like slightly different colored tiles being put up against one another. And they're so similar that, again, under normal light, you can't see the difference. But when you put the... um, put yourself under a black light in a dark room, those differences show up. That's why they think we're able to see Blaschko's lines. That's why they think we have them. It's the same reason when you look at identical twins, they're they're actually a little bit different is, again, these environmental factors that happen mm-hmm. when you're a, a twin. And, and in fact, uh, we just did an episode recently. What was that on just this week? On doppelgangers. Doppelgangers, when uh, they've seen a lot of evidence, like when twins are split up at birth, right? Um, they end up being quite a bit different, and it's because of epigenetics, these environmental factors. But even if they they aren't broken up, even if they're together, these twins are these you know these minute little genetic differences that end up meaning these twins are a little bit different, and that's the same basic concept here. Yeah, but rather than whole. People, we're talking about the difference between genetically um, identical cells. You right, see? within one person. There is something else called chimerism. So instead of mosaicism, this is chimerism. And some people can have different genetic material within them. So like um, very famously, people with two different eyes, they're chimeras, or they, they're chimeric, I should say, because different genetic information went into constructing each eye, and that's why they have two different colored eyes. That's extraordinarily rare. Mosaicism apparently is universal. That we're all, we're just not, if you took one cell and another cell and you could get as granular as possible in investigating them, you'd see that they are just slightly not the same, even though they came from the same blueprint. Yeah, there's a New York Mets pitcher that has one blue eye and one dark eye. Is that David Bowie, number 72? <laughs> no, it's uh, Max Scherzer. And uh, boy, it's just, I didn't even notice it until last year. And this is a guy who's sort of at the latter stages of his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then once you see a picture of this guy, you're like, oh, my God, it's really a striking difference because it's a very, very blue eye and a very, very brown eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just think it's so cool looking. Yeah, for sure. Like what a, uh, I don't know. I, I would just always just go right up to people's faces and, and go, hi, how are you? <laughs> just <laughs> right. to like yeah. freak them out a little bit. I think it's really cool. Give them the left side and then the right side and the left side and the right side. Yeah. So like we said, there like there there's kind of some general rules that like these lines will follow depending on where you are on your body, right? Yeah. There's like patterns, uh, which makes sense because – you know, all of us sort of grow generally in the same way as far as arms and legs and fingies and toes right? and uh, torsos and necks and armpits and all that stuff. So <laughs> right? depending on – can, can we keep naming parts? Yeah. How, how about the dirty parts? Let's start. <laughs> um, there are only two. Uh, so when you're looking at a body, like there will be maybe a V-shape down your back, mm-hmm. uh, an inverted U uh, from the breast to the upper arm – uh, your lateral trunk will have a wave-like shape. There might be an S shape on your abdomen, stuff like that. Yeah. Your scalp, actually, if you look at your whole head, it looks like, as far as your Blashco lines are, are concerned, that you're wearing a balaclava. Like mm-hmm. around around your eye area is open, but there's different like lines surrounding it elsewise. And apparently on your scalp, it spirals, whereas on the side of your face, it comes, uh, they're like kind of vertical lines. It's pretty cool. There's, um, I think Blashko himself did, you know, some initial um, descriptions of it through mm-hmm. sketches. But since then, science has really kind of gotten pretty good at drawing it. So there's a lot of neat um, drawings of Blashko's lines on, on the internet of all places. 
<laughs> but was so, he early 1900s? He was like 1901 from what I saw. Oh, okay, the earliest. But Chuck, I think you should take the fact of the uh, the short stuff, um, that the Blashko's lines don't just exist on the skin, right? Yeah, this was <laughs> pretty freaky. Um, apparently your teeth and eyes and tongue all have Blashko's lines as well. Yeah, which that makes is sense. nuts. I mean, anything that, that forms from cells, sure. you know, expressing themselves, writing That's cool very good poetry point. and songs. <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier, though, about there are certain conditions that someone might have where these lines are revealed in, in regular light with regular right. vision, right? Yeah, yeah. So vitiligo, uh, where your skin loses its pigmentation, um, it often follows Blaschko's lines. Um also, there's uh, other types of uh, congenital conditions, I believe, and some inquired ones where um, – so vitiligo would be like a negative of your your um, Blaschko's lines. Right. Whereas the, some of the other ones, they're like – it's like a, a tiger stripes. Like you can see the person's Blaschko's lines because it's hyperpigmented. So you can see them without UV uh, light. You can just see them under normal visible light. And it's pretty cool looking actually, I have to say. Yeah, although usually if you look up on the internet and see what this looks like, you'll it's just like close-ups of armpits and stuff. Sure, sure. And I say it's pretty cool looking. I don't know how, you know, somebody who has a condition where their Blaschko's lines are showing all the time feel about it. But as right. an observer, I think it's pretty interesting and neat. And then also when you stop and think about it, if you're like, that person's skin is striped, your skin is striped too, pal. You just don't see it because you right. have to see it under nor- normal UV lights. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for Blash Coast Lines, eh? Hey. Thanks, Yumi. And thank you, friend, for listening to this episode. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.